This is Twit. Uh, you talk a little bit about patches being <laughs> pretty ineffective. I mean, we've gotten so used to, at this point, the patch or the update being the solution to our problems. But, I, you know, I feel like we also realize that these things often come far too late. I'm an Android user. I know all about that on a personal level. Thankfully, I use Google's hardware, so I'm a little bit closer to those updates. But the majority of people don't. And they end up waiting for these updates that never happen and uh, make them so incredibly insecure. Um, I mean, what what needs to happen there to make sure that this is an effective solution? Is it forced automatic updates or is it just a total rethinking of how this is handled? Well, so there's, there's a lot there. You know, so updates are how we get security. Yeah. Right. Software is insecure. As I started with, you know, we we're not willing to pay for quality software in the beginning. So if we're not going to do things right the first time, our only option is to be agile and fix things quickly when something goes wrong. And that's update. And if you think about the update successes, it is automatic updates, which happens to uh, your Windows machine, your iPhone, happens to your Google phone also. Yep. It doesn't happen to, to most Android phones because there's some handset manufacturer and uh, telco in the middle, which is why Google decided to make their own phone to get that same closed ecosystem that Apple has. But patches are how we get security. Now, if you think about it, there's a security team at Apple, at Google, at Microsoft that are there to write and push out those patches as soon as a vulnerability is discovered. And that's why that ecosystem works. You start moving to uh, IoT devices, and that ecosystem is not there. Most of those devices are designed offshore by third parties. Uh, they come together, write the software, then disperse. There are no security teams on staff to write a patch for your DVR or your webcam or your router. They're just not there. And, and sort of even worse, a lot of those devices have no way to patch them. And right now, almost certainly, the way you patch your home router is you throw it away and buy a new one. Yeah. Right? That's the mechanism. There isn't another one. So you can say you have to patch, but suddenly that changes the entire software ecosystem. And honestly, that throw it away and buy a new one is a good security measure. Every three to five years, we get new phones and laptops, and each one is more secure than the last. You move to consumer devices, they have a much longer lifespan. And that DVR you buy is going to last seven to 10 years. That refrigerator, 25 years. Right. And I installed an IoT thermostat in my home last year, and I expect to replace it approximately never. So you're just not going to get that continuous improvement. I mean, what do we think? Think of a car, right? You buy a car today, software's two years old, you can drive it for 10 years, sell it. Somebody else buys it, drives it for 10 years, they sell it. This point is probably put in a boat, shipped to somewhere in Latin America, where someone else buys it and drives another 10 to 20 years. All right. So go home, find a computer from 1976. Try to boot it up. Try to make it secure. Try to make it work. We have no idea how to maintain 40-year-old consumer software. We haven't the faintest clue. Microsoft, Apple, they'll depreciate their operating systems very quickly because it's too much work to maintain the old ones. We're gonna to have to figure out how to do that with appliances, with vehicles, with urban infrastructure, with a lot of things, and we don't know how. Right? Patching is gonna fail in weird ways because we're not used to it in these new applications. Obviously the solution is artificial intelligence because that's the solution to everything nowadays. Right. Artificial intelligence and uh, blockchain, I think, together. Yes, <laughs> both of those in tandem.